When you are removing a power valve, you must put a piece of wood in the exhaust port to hold the valve in position. Then loosen the bolt and remove the power valve. The power valves have identification numbers, one or two on them. Valves having an ID number one must be installed on the same side. When you install the valves, you must not forget to put in the knock pin also. We will now review the mechanism and operation of the auto lube pump. The RD500 oil pump output is controlled by three different means. Oil consumption is reduced in the low to middle speed ranges, and it is increased in the high speed range. As a result, the total oil consumption has been reduced. This shows the oil pump in an intake stroke. Oil flows from the oil tank to all areas around the plunger. The plunger rotates as it is driven by the drive gear. It is also pushed to the right by the return spring. When a vacuum is created within the oil chamber and the oil inlet of the plunger comes in front of the oil passage of the pump, oil flows into each oil chamber. As the plunger rotates farther, it is pushed to the left by the cam in such a way that it compresses oil. When the plunger and the outlet port of the pump meet, the oil pressure in the oil chamber surpasses the force of the check valve and the oil flows into the first and fourth cylinders. As illustrated here, the plunger is driven by the cam and the return spring and repeats intake and output strokes as it turns 90 degrees. Every time the plunger turns once, oil is supplied to the first and fourth cylinders. And after 180 degrees of a turn, oil is supplied to the second and third cylinders. We must talk about the throttle at this point. As the throttle opening increases, the control axle rotates. An eccentric cam is located at the lower end of the axle, and it increases the stroke of the plunger. Now we will look at the cooling system of the RD500. The coolant starts to flow through a different channel when the coolant temperature rises above 71 degrees centigrade. When the temperature reaches 71 degrees centigrade, the thermostat opens up a gate. The coolant starts to flow and it is cooled by the radiator. When the coolant temperature increases further and reaches 105 degrees centigrade, the electric driven fan starts to run and the coolant is cooled more. The water pump is mounted with two bolts. When you are installing the pump, you must make sure the drive gear and the driven gear are engaged to each other correctly. There is another bolt, which cannot be seen normally, under the water pump. When you are removing the crankcase cover, you must remove the water pump first. We will disassemble the clutch next. Parts have aligning marks and washers are positioned in particular directions. First you must match the aligning marks on the pressure plate and the clutch boss. The projection of the cushion ring must be aligned between the punch marks on the clutch boss. When you remove the push rod, you must do it carefully because the O-ring is there too. The clutch lock nut must be removed using a clutch holder special tool. There are four rings that are assembled at the base of the boss. The projected part of this ring must face outside. And the outside mark of this ring must also face outside when you are installing it. Before removing the clutch housing, you must first loosen the drive gear nuts. We will now take some time to explain the friction gear. The primary drive gear consists of two gears having different numbers of teeth.
For the purpose of this service video, we will call the driven gear A, the main drive gear B, and the sub gear C. Gear C is free of gear B. It is held in place only by the friction force of the conical washer. As the crank rotates, gear B drives A. At the same time, C is driven by A. Power is transmitted between B and A only. In other words, gears A, B, and C are always engaged, and therefore backlash is totally eliminated. Gear C must be installed in such a way that this groove faces outside. We will now review how to install the balancer gear and the drive gears. First, the punch marks on the balancer gear and the lower drive gear must be aligned. Then the projected mark on the crankcase and the punch marks on each drive gear must be aligned. When all marks are correctly aligned, you can install the clutch-driven gear. You must do it carefully so that these marks are aligned. When you are removing the rotor, you must use a special tool sheave holder. Then you remove the rotor using the flywheel puller. Next, you remove the pump cover. And remove the trochoid pump. Do not lose this O-ring. And check the strainer for clogging. The Yamaha RD500 is equipped with a combination of wet and dry sumps to lubricate major parts around the transmission with greater reliability. This shows the direction of oil flow. You can check the oil flow at the check bolt. Loosen the bolt slightly when the engine is idling. Then check if oil comes out from the bolt. If it does, the system is functioning properly.